When the bite gets tough, fishing a young tube slow can't be beat. Look at that tank. This thing is so freaking thick. Hey guys, today I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about shatter baits. <laughs> My rod doesn't fall over. Um, chatter baits, kind of got into fishing them real hardcore about 16, 17 months ago or so. Um, before that, I've, I've tried Booyah chatter baits a couple times, I think, and to me it was like an inferior version of a spinner bait. It was kind of the same, same deal, flash, vibration, but I, I've had so much success for so many years on spinner baits that I was just like, yeah, you know, it's like a, it's not quite as good of a version of a spinner bait. And, and they do have quite a bit of overlap. I mean, the chatter bait and the spinner bait, I feel like if you're throwing one or the other in front of a fish that's hungry, that's going to for sure eat, they'd probably take either one of them. That being said, over the last year or so, I have really started switching mostly to chatterbaits instead of spinnerbaits. Not that spinnerbaits are bad, but just there's some advantages to chatterbaits that, that I really like, that uh, go with the way I like to fish. And I'm going to tell you some of those reasons and show you what kind of chatterbaits I like to use, what kind of trailers I like to put on them, and when I like to throw them specifically. So. This one I was throwing today. This is a Z-Man Project Z chatterbait. Skirt's got some, I mean, it's, the skirt's looking rough, basically. It's got a lot of pike on it. I mean, every pike, you know, you lose a couple pieces of skirts, probably bass even, you lose some skirts on them. So the skirt's looking a little rough, but it's still working. Um, right now I have a four inch Authentix grub on there. Now there's a couple different things I like to put as trailers. Grubs are one of them. Uh, they work great. This tail has a, a like a very light, subtle kicking action when you're pulling the bait in. Uh, and then a lot of times I like to put some erratic action on, on my chatter baits. So I like to give them rips and then that tail kicks really hard and then pauses and let them fall. And then that tail just slowly uh, fluttering as it falls down. So this is one of my favorite things to put on as a trailer. Uh, they're pretty strong. They stay on there a long time. And the Project Z Chatterbait, my favorite thing about this Chatterbait, besides the skirts on it are so awesome, is that it has a double hook keeper here. So you can see there's one right here and there's one right here. Most of them only have a single one and this double one just seems to hold them on so much better. It's extra money, they do cost more, but that extra hook keeper is going to save you money in grubs or other trailers. So I think it's worth it. The colors look better. Uh, it just seems like all the components are a little bit better. I'll show you some other chatter baits in a minute too. Um, there's a couple different line ties. Most of the new ones have this uh, little wire line tie here with a little loop here. Uh, some of the old Z-Mans and some other chatter baits have like this little snap here. I really don't like this one that much. Um, it's just not as strong. I've had them fail before. It's just not as strong as this. So if you're looking, I definitely recommend getting the ones with this on them. And you can easily see it through the package, see that it has that set up. And then I actually run a snap swivel on here. Uh, the swivel's just kind of nice, just in case you're casting in the wind and that bait is uh, kind of spinning around a little bit or something keeps the line tight or it keeps your line from uh, getting all wound up and then it's just a little bit of extra for those pipe to not bite it off so as you can see like if a pipe were to engulf the whole thing there it's got about another inch or so before it's going to break this off um, i don't really like to throw leaders so this is kind of like a nice little compromise i don't think it really gives away anything and i'm really not throwing chatter baits in clear water i'll touch on that also but this is mostly like a dirty water presentation and they're not really noticing this swivel. So um, it's usually not a problem. The setup I'm throwing this on, I have a Tatula SV from Daiwa. Uh, one of my favorite reels of all time. This thing is so 
smooth, strong, palms incredibly well. It's a nice low profile, it's light. Um, it's got the T-wing system on here, so if you're not familiar with that. Um, it has a, I see a little area here for your line to go through, but then when you're casting, that pops down and it has a bigger area for your line to go through. So there's less friction, longer casts. Um, it's not like the, the longest casting bait caster I've ever had. There's, there are other ones that cast maybe a little bit farther than this one. But when you dial this one in, this thing casts super far, super smooth. Uh, if you have it set right with the magnetic control here and the spool tension knob here, very hard to get backlashes. In fact, I have a buddy who was is getting more into fishing. He's only been using spinning reels and he's looking to get a bait caster. And I was kind of having him test this one out and I was trying to show him what happens when you don't put your thumb on the spool. Like this is what happens when you cast and you don't put your thumb on the spool. This line is going to spin out. And I tried to do it and get a backlash in it like five different times and I couldn't even get it to backlash. This SV spool is so smooth. You, you, if you have it set right, it casts far. You don't even have to thumb it. I'd uh, still thumb it, but you don't even have to thumb it. Um, it's just such a smooth retrieve, small reel. It is. It comes in at 200 bucks, or you can get them on Amazon for like 160, 170, sometimes on sale. And then I got the 8.1 to one, which when I'm fishing like kayaks or stand up paddle boards or something where the wind is really moving you around, you want to be able to get that line in quick. Or if a fish starts swimming towards you, you want to be able to keep that line. But sometimes with the 811, you're moving it a little too fast. So 7 2 to 1 would also be a good ratio for this. Um, if you're doing the 811, just be a little careful not to pull it away too fast. Um, you don't need to do real hard hook sets with the chatterbait. Ah, it's getting tangled up there. there. You don't need to do real hard hook sets. They do have this big single hook. But uh, you should be throwing it on a braid. If you're throwing it on a braid, in this case, I like to use 40 pound test, either Daiwa J braid or suffix 832. This 40 pound test doesn't stretch. A lot of times that fish will come up and grab it and turn and try to swim away. And with the 8.1 to 1 reel, you're, you're keeping good tension on that line. So you don't have to do a huge hard hook set on this. Um, you just have to you know, get a, a decent hook set into it. Make sure you penetrate that big hook, but don't rear back on it so hard because you will pull it out of their mouth sometimes. And then for the rod, I just have a St. Croix Bass X. Um, this is a seven foot one medium fast action. Uh, it's a little light. Uh, it's got a little bit of a softer tip than uh, you might use for chatter baits. But I do like having that really soft tip. You can really feel the vibrations. Um, if you, I like to slow roll them a lot, especially in cold water. So you're just turning that reel handle enough that you can feel the bait is vibrating. So I like that rod for this. This rod is also extremely light and it is a strong rod for being such a light rod. So such a light setup, I can throw chatterbaits on it all day long. And uh, I'll just touch on best time to throw a chatterbait. Um, these where they really shine in cold water. So like beginning of the season and late season, my favorite times to throw them. Uh, like I said, I really like to slow roll them and I'll give them some erratic action sometimes. Sometimes I'll rip it a little bit, like rip, pause, rip, 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 pause, or just like twitch, pause. Sometimes I'll cast them out and I'll just let them sink and then kind of pull, 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 pull and let them sink and pull. Uh, they, the fish really seem to like that erratic action. Don't just cast this thing out and reel it in. I mean, if you're doing, if you're slow rolling, if it's really cold out, that's always a good way to catch them. But just casting out and reeling it in like a medium retrieve is definitely not the best way to do it. You want to give it some unique, weird actions to entice those strikes. Water's really cold, then you you want to like slow roll it and give it some pauses here and there. And usually when you pause it, if you just start slow rolling it again the blade won't engage, start vibrating. So you need to give it a little twitch to get it vibrating. But that's the best way I found out how to use it. Um, it'll still work throughout the summer and it'll still work in clear water, but usually in clear water, I like to use crankbaits or some other kind of more lifelike bait fish imitators. Um, it will still work. I, I don't hesitate to throw it, but it's not my first option in clear water. Um, dirty water is really where this thing excels. That vibration, if you got a, that big paddle tail on the back, which I'll show you, 
The grub puts off a little bit of vibration too, but a big paddle tail just gives it more vibration in that dirty water. And that's where I've found to be the best time to throw chatterbaits. Early season or late season, dirty water, great bait for bass. Um, show you one more. So you, I like to throw a grub on there. My other favorite would be a paddle tail. This one happens to be a Kalen's 3.8 inch seismic shad. So it's a little bit smaller swim bait. It's got that big paddle tail. And this thing, when you're reeling in quick, it's kind of swimming good. If you're slow rolling it, it's just like a wobble. The action pairs really well with uh, chatterbait. And I like going with a 3.8 inch instead of like the four and a half or five inch because you're, they're not short striking this one as much. Um, if you're going out there looking for numbers and size, this is a great one to throw. If you're out there just trying to get that really big bite, you might want to go with a bigger profile. Just make sure you're not ripping it out of their mouth. You're giving them plenty of time to get the whole bait in their mouth because you will miss fish on this sometimes. And especially pike. Bass generally hit it pretty well, but pike for some reason short strike it all the time. So I know if I cast out there, pulling it in, and I feel a hit, I try to set the hook and I miss it. Feel a hit again and try to set the hook and I miss it. I, I know it's more than likely a pike that's just short striking it. And usually a small one. Um, and then one more thing, just to be careful with chatterbaits, that blade on there, the edges are pretty sharp and it's hard. And when you're getting those fish in, just be sure that you're not letting them shake their mouth back and forth with that blade hanging out of their mouth because it will ding you in the fingers and it does hurt them. My thumb started bleeding the other day because I don't remember if it was a bass or a pike, but something shook its head while I was trying to grab it. And the edge of that blade went right into my thumb. It wasn't a bad cut or anything, but just so you know that you need to watch out for that. Don't let them fling those hooks into your hand. And then now I'll go over last up uh, some of the different kinds of chatterbaits. So uh, this is like a basic Z-Man chatterbait. Uh, it's got a, uh, just a regular silicone skirt on here. This one's chartreuse and white. Good color for dirty water. If it's a little bit clearer water, I like to go with a more lifelike, like brown, green, or any of the more natural colors, like a silver bait fish color too. Um, it's got a good hook on there. Like I said, it's only got a single bait holder, so doesn't hold it as well as the Project Z does, but it does still have this good line tie here. No eyes on the uh, jig head here, but that's not really a deal breaker. And this one I think is 3 8 ounce, so it's a little lighter. Um, still casts pretty well, but the half ounce definitely casts better. This one is a one ouncer, and I, I was pretty excited to throw this and try it. It'd be, be good for deeper water. And you think it would cast better, and if you have a really stout rod, it would probably cast better, but it I found that the half ouncer actually casts better because the half ouncer isn't weighing down so much on the rod. Like I said, if you have a really stiff rod, this probably would cast farther and better. But when you got a rod with a little bit softer tip that can load up and kind of slingshot those baits, the half ounce is better caster. Um, I don't remember which one this was. Let's see. Oh, this is a Project Z. It's got the two hook keepers on there. Um, this is a little bit more natural color. Like I said, I like this color. And then it's just got a Reaction Innovations paddle tail on there. Um, I'm happy I bought this. I'm sure it has some specific applications, but like I said, the one ounce are kind of like a, not a good all around chatterbait. Uh, it's more for specific situations or deeper water. Then this one, I don't remember. I think it's Picasso Baits maybe makes this one. I got it on Tackle Warehouse. This one is bucktail. So you're really not worrying about putting any trailers on this. This one's more subtle. The bucktail should be all that they need. And bucktail is generally good for really cold water. So I'm really excited to start throwing this one. It is a 3 8 ounce, so it's a little lighter. Um, it's a little more compact than the other chatterbaits. But once that bucktail soaks up a little bit of water, it'll probably be a little heavier, a little easier to cast. Um, it has this snap. Uh, snap piece on here which as I said I don't like as much as the other ones it's not as durable but hopefully this one holds up well and then I got one other bucktail one it's kind of like a combination of bucktail and uh, silicone skirt there uh, this one is really good works uh, great for cold water also 
black. This one's black and blue. I used to have another like gray and white one, but that one got bit off by a northern. It's got a snap, but then it also has a little O-ring on here, which has held up pretty well. Uh, like I said, I really like that Z-Man one though. But uh, bucktail, I generally think of like really cold water. Silicone skirts, I think are better for uh, any time the water's a little bit warmer. But really, I don't think it matters much between the two. Like I said, if you're gonna get bit, you're probably gonna get bit. I don't think one is gonna really entice fish over the other one that much. So I think that's pretty much it, guys, for chatterbait fishing. Um, I'm gonna link some clips from today. I was just out on a kayak and got some bass on chatterbait. Unfortunately, no giants, but I did get a few nice ones and a few dinks. So um, hopefully, enjoy that footage. I'll try to make it short. I know this video is kind of running long, but. Hopefully you picked up some new tips about chatterbaits, um, what you can use them for, best times to throw them. Hopefully I can help you catch more bass. Thanks for watching guys. Finally. Jesus Christ. Almost slid in there too. Decent little bass. Oh man. What is this? Feels like a good one. Of course. Seriously, freaking snagged a big buffalo fish. God, I felt big. I was really excited there. Damn it. Ah. Right in the freaking butthole, too. Hey, Mr. Buffalo. Haven't seen one of you in a while. How are you even on there? It's literally like pierced. There he goes. Ah, I wanted to show you guys one of them, but I should have netted him. Oh, I forgot I had the freaking net in here. I should have netted him and showed you guys. Kind of an interesting fish. They're a little similar to a carp, but they're actually native to the US been here a long time ah I think in this dirty water they can't really tell I don't know if they don't feel the vibration of the chatterbait or what but just as soon as I set the hook into it it got scared and started moving really hoping it's a big pike or a big giant largemouth Oh, there's a fish. It's a pretty nice bass. Come on, buddy. Cold weather, rough water bass, and we got some freaking serious waves here. Glad I took the kayak out and not the stand up paddle board. What do we got here? Is that a bass? No. Yeah, yeah, it is. Is that a big one? Kinda. Not bad. 
Getting a little bigger. Last year I was catching 17, 18, 19 inches over here. Like I get at least one every time I came over here. Now this year, the size has definitely gone down. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> this is some kind of a fish. Yes. Nice. It's a pretty good one. Chunky guy there, what is that? Jeez, what have you been eating? All right, buddy, you're gonna need to hoist it up here. Girls can start eating anytime now. 